please give a big, warm NYU welcome to Chris and Kirk. Thank you. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the process a little bit, um, and then we're going to talk about character, and then we're going to show you um, one sequence that's in the final film, but we're going to show you in three different stages, so you can kind of see how it worked through. So just to give you an overlay of what it is. So this was the idea of what we were trying to do, is build this world from scratch. Because this film, Crudes is, a, you know, the first DreamWorks, well, first is the first DreamWorks family film that actually features a family, but also it's the first movie that's like completely from the imaginations of the artists. There's nothing, that we had nothing to lean on. So, you know, in building the world, it took a lot of, our artists, you know, years to figure out that tone and figure out what that world is. And that brings us to our caveman reimagined or where the hell do we start? <laughs> so we'll just briefly go through the, our little voice cast. The most important relationship in this film, there's a triangular relationship between Grug, Eep, and Guy. And this was very unique. Like we've worked on a lot of films where there's two main characters. You've got an antagonist and a, and a protagonist and uh, villains, heroes, things like this. But this is a very different creature because there is no villain in the Crudes. The villain is really just the idea of change. And so throughout the film, they're being chased by this, this um, catastrophe. So as long as these characters went through this emotional journey and, and, and changed, then we did our job. So the things they did didn't matter so much as long as the, uh, the emotional journey is going on. So we have this triangular relationship between Eep and Grug and Guy. We were very lucky to get Nick um, to play Grug. He was our first choice. And you know the big thing for why we wanted Nick was that Grug is a character who is kind of a negative character. He's always saying no. He's you know he, he he's stern. And the beauty of Nick's voice is that there's a beleaguered weight of the world on his shoulder quality and everything he says that you really can't n not like the guy. So it was really critical, I think more critical on this film than any other film I've ever worked on, that the voice cast be able to do some very difficult things and not lose the audience. So Eep is kind of negative for a lot of the time. We brought Emma Stone up as, as our first choice, but we thought that she she had this quality to her voice that just sounded like it would fit this kind of a character because our Eep is not, she's like, she's not a princess. She's a very different sort of character. Ryan Reynolds' character, Guy, you can imagine that when he started the movie, when he was initially written in, he was a bit of an, a, like a wacky inventor because, you know, he's a more advanced human. And one of the things that really helped us to get out of that rut and stay out of it was Ryan Reynolds' voice because he just doesn't have that sort of inventor kind of kooky, nutty guy quality. He's very grounded, very warm, and he's a nice guy. That's the other thing is all these characters, they're, they're all nice to each other. They all like each other. They're, they're doing their best to figure this whole thing out. And, you know, we always record the voices first and then we animate second. Okay, so... Boarding. One of the things that uh, you will be talked to about when you first get to a CG studio uh, as a director is the pipeline. They talk about their pipeline. This is a very big deal. This is the, well, I'd say that's pretty, you know, pretty, a little confusing, but. That's the simpler level that's the simpler of the pipeline. <laughs> it's more like a sewer system. It's like the sewer system to a city. And basically it means that you can go really any direction, anywhere, at any time and just go backwards and stuff like that. So it's a very complex creature nowadays. And so here's like a layout, like an idea of how the team behind the crews would, or any DreamWorks film would work and how many weeks on a sequence. Um, so story would work on it for so long, then it goes to viz dev, then it goes to editorial, voice recordings, and it works its way through the process. And it takes about 30 weeks for a sequence to get all the way through production. And here is how it would break down. So when people go, why the movies take so long? It's really the development, the pre-production. The production, as you see, is, you know, uh, a year and a half, maybe two at most, right? But, and then yeah. with post-production. Okay, so this is a sequence that was written and handed off to the story artists. This is the first time that the entire family meets Guy. I mean, he got knocked out. So we're gonna open up from Guy's point of view. And this is exactly, if you guys were working at the studio, this is exactly how I'd pitch it to you guys if you're gonna see it for the first time. So, uh, uh, he's so different looking. Ooh, tiny jaw, tiny teeth. Oh, none of them are loose. Cran, get your fingers out of his mouth. Don't touch it, it's different. It's a boy. Boy, what? Ugh. Guy's point of view. Ugh. 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 He's waking up. Everybody, pretend you don't know me. Hi. Hi. Shoo! <laughs> ah! Go! Stop it, Dad. He's not just gonna... He runs off. Okay, let's get to that mountain, Crudes. 
nothing stopping us now. So, on behalf of the animation students at NYU, I thank Rick and Chris for this fantastic presentation. Do you agree? Thank you, guys.